So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm joined by Duncan Shand, who is the um, founder of Young and Shand, which was originally a digital advertising agency, but in more recent years has switched to a, a full service, independent, integrating advertising agency. Did I get that right, Duncan? Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here, Deborah. It's, yeah. it's nice to catch up, even though we have to do this virtually. I know, it's a bit sad, isn't it? But we, um, yeah, so we first met, oh God, many, many years back when I was actually teaching at the uh, Marketing Association, isn't that yeah. right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that was many years ago. So I think back in those days, you know, you were just starting out on that sort of huge growth of the agency. I understand you've now got about 35 staff, um, yeah. so you've kind of reached your, your goal in terms of, well, in terms yeah. of being able to Midpoint, midpoint. Midpoint, goal. yeah, okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So before we get started, I'd love to hear about, you know, where the journey that you've come along, because I know you've had a couple of uh, interesting challenges along the way, but before we get started, professional and personal bests, what would they be for you, Duncan? Oh, look, you know, um, personal, professional and personal, you know, personal, um, really, I'm a, I'm a late runner, so I, I turned 50 a couple of years ago. Yep. And my brother had signed up to do the Auckland Marathon, and he kind of challenged me to kind of do it with him. And, uh, you know, basically the conversation went along the lines of, you know, look, if you don't do this with me, you'll never run a marathon in your life. Um, doing a marathon at 50 has kind of got a, got a good good ring to it, doesn't it? Yep. And so after being baited for a while, I, I, I took up the challenge and I, I ran my first marathon at 50. Um and actually loved it. So I, I'm not really a, a natural runner, but or I wasn't a regular runner, but I've actually really enjoyed um, running and, and I've I've done three since or two two more since then. So I've run three marathons. So yes. um, running marathons would be my personal goal. Yeah. Um professionally, I think, you know, um developing young Shand into a into a a, a really strong um Credible, uh, uh, um, integrated creative agency um, would have to be up there on my list of things um, that I put on that list. I'm really proud of what we've kind of achieved at, at the agency. Yep. You know, we 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 punch above our weight. We got listed as the as the fourth best creative agency in New Zealand um, in the in the campaign uh, brief Asia um, the work awards. Um, fourth best doesn't really sound like anything to kind of uh, get excited by, but you know when you're comparing us um, on that list to people like DDB and Colenso and um, you know others, you know I'm pretty happy to be up there as number four amongst a sea of um, agencies in New Zealand. Oh, completely agree. Hey, so before you decided to start Young and Shand, like what were you doing before that? Yeah, so I was a, I was a corporate marketing guy. So I've had um, half of my career has been client side um, in, in um, businesses like in New Zealand, um, a, a biotech company, ICP Bio, and I was general manager sales and marketing at IHUG, um, the, one of the original um, sort of challenger ISPs um, that a, a few years ago is now, it's all been um, uh, brought by Vodafone. So that brand doesn't exist anymore. So I was a, I was a, I was a marketing guy, um, you know, working, working in clients um, before I kind of, I had a period after iHug where I just kind of um, did consulting and I worked on sort of marketing, uh, branding, um, uh, uh, branding, marketing plans and online consulting projects. And it was really in that period where I just kind of got hooked by this online marketing thing and all my work um, came from the online, after two or three years, all my work was in the online marketing space. And that kind of coincided with the GFC. So no one had any money to do big brand ads. And everyone thought that this dream of digital marketing being cheap, free and driving results is something they should explore. So I had too much work um, to handle. And that's kind of really where young, really when young Shan started. Wow. Okay. So it literally was just you uh, as a consultant, it started to grow bigger and you started employing people. So tell yes. us, take us on the journey. Tell us a little bit about, you know, where that was, how long ago was that? 11 years ago. 11 so years ago. Um, okay. I started the business with a guy, Ben Young. So we, we, we founded Young Shan together okay. and um, you know, really the first five years was really, really strong growth. You know, that was the heyday of uh, digital marketing. Um, you know, we, we, you know, started with two of us and we'd, we'd grown it to probably 40 people after five years, maybe 50 people after five years. Um, and we hustled hard. You know, I think in that first 12 months, you know, 
we we did something like 200 or 250 proposals um, to people, um, you know, and that's a lot of a lot of coffees and a lot of meetings, um, you know. But through that period, we managed to pick up, you know, probably five or six foundation kind of clients that really drove the growth of the agency over over that five year period, um, including people like um, you know Goodman Fielder, Watties, and Lion New Zealand. Um, so they're great brands, and um, you know they really helped underpin and, and sort of um, build the foundation of the agency. Okay, so that is quite large growth in quite a short period of time. What were the sort of challenges in that time period for you? Um, well, it was it, it, it was really just kind of keeping up with the work, and you know, I, I guess you know it was it was evolving, and probably over that over the end of that five year period, um, probably the biggest challenge we had was realizing um, that um, realizing and questioning whether just being a solely focused digital agency was the right strategic move for the future. So that was a kind of a fundamental challenge for us. Um, and, you know, we had we had one of our brands at Lion um, kind of just stolen out from under our feet uh, by DDB, who, uh, who, you know, we'd taken the business off originally, and then they, they, they pulled it back, you know, kind of three years later. And you know they they'd gone through a process of of learning and understanding digital after they realised digital marketing um, wasn't going to go away. So so that was a kind of a fundamental shift for us was navigating and and recognising how we needed to adapt and change as the as that kind of marketing landscape um, kind of changed around us. Okay. And in terms of people, how did you choose? Because when you're growing quite quickly, you know, you have to get people on board. How do you go about choosing the right people to join? Yeah, well, um, you know, having the right team is really important. And, you know, without a doubt, we're in a, we're in a people industry. We are nothing but um, a group of, um, you know, talented individuals trying to do extraordinary things um, to transform our clients. It's kind of what, what we do. So without, the, without extraordinary people, um, you're not going to be able to do that. So bringing, bringing really good people into the team was important. I think in the early days, one of the things, one of the challenges that we had was, um, it's hard to bring really experienced people out of other agencies when you're a, a new upstart a agency yourself, right? Because there's a lot of risk associated with that. So one of our challenges in the early days was we had a very young staff. So we had no problem hiring juniors, hiring young, um, talented graduates. And you know, one of the things we learned very fast was you know, you give a young, talented um, grad uh, a, an opportunity and they work hard, they're smart, they get on with things. Um, so, so we had no shortage of, of, of youth and exuberance and intelligence kind of on the team. Um, and, you know, I guess we always, we looked for that X factor when we're hiring. We looked for, you know, we always had clear values established in terms of how we wanted to operate. So we're looking for people that could kind of live those values. Um, we had a vision of where we wanted to go. People were excited about joining. But I guess one of the challenges at the time was um, lots of people that were had lots of enthusiasm, but not necessarily a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So so that was definitely a challenge that we had to manage. So how do you overcome that? Because I, I, I hear you. I mean, that I've you know, taken on a few young, young grads myself and they certainly are hugely enthusiastic and super smart. Yeah, um, yeah. But at the end of the day, sometimes you need a bit of grey hair um, to, to know how to handle certain situations, to know how to deal with people. And worse, sometimes people just expect to be dealing with an older person. There's that whole ageism thing kind of going on. So Absolutely. Now, yeah. I, think, I think while we were a, a new agency in, in, in digital, um, that youth was a positive, right? Because uh, people were looking at digital and going, okay, these guys are new. They've got a young, dynamic, smart team on board. They, they know what they're talking about, right? So that was, that, that was an advantage for us. Mm -hmm. But I think as we transitioned from, um, I guess the choice we had when we realized um, that we couldn't just survive as a digital agency was we could choose to stay digital but then we've more become a production partner for people that were wanting to implement things. So we'd really become a tech shop um, and, and agencies would be 
coming up with ideas and we'd be implementing them for them. So we could choose to do that, but you know that wasn't really appealing to anyone. We wanted to have a, a seat at the lead table. We wanted to be making decisions. We wanted to be um, helping brands decide where they wanted to go. So the, the other choice we had to make was elevating and really becoming a full service creative agency. So that's a pretty um, massive kind of pivot though, isn't it? How did that? Well, huge pivot, um, yeah. huge pivot. And and so, you know, we, 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 it didn't work the first time round. So we tried it the first time round with our existing team, with the, um, the enthusiastic young um, uh, team that were kind of, you know, we'd, we're willing to give anything a go. But, you know, that lack of experience on how to make a fully integrated campaign, how to, how to do television production, you know, we all thought, oh, well, that's just easy. It's, it's nowhere near as hard as building a website. A website's code. This is just film. So, you know, so we, we, we had a, an unrealistic expectation of how hard some of this stuff was um, and a team that didn't have any experience on how to do it. Um, and then in a few cases, clients um, that weren't really that forgiving or nice. So it was really you know, the first time rounds didn't work. So we, we kind of retreated tail between our legs and said, actually, no, we just want to be a great creative digital agency. So it didn't work first time around because of the inexperience of the team. And what impact um, did that, that have on you as a founder? You know, because obviously for the team, it would have an effect. What about you as the founder? Well, it's, it's, it's definitely challenging because, you know, you grow up with a, with a vision of, you know, we are going to be the best at this in our heads. So I, mean, I think it's like anything, you, you go on a journey, you know, you, you have to understand that the world is changing. And, you know, I think you, you have to accept at some point that you're going to have to change with it, otherwise you're going to be left behind. So sometimes you just have no choice. So, you know, you have, you know, businesses sometimes have to have to adapt if they're going to survive. Um, and that's, you know, we had a go, it didn't work. We thought we could retreat, but we very re quickly realized that, no, no, we just had it wrong. We didn't have the wrong um, clients. We didn't have the, um, the right um, uh, team on board. Um, actually, strategically, it was the right move to make. We just didn't execute that, um, that move at that time right so the second time around we brought in more senior people that had been there and done that into the team um, uh, to complement the the kind of youth and enthusiasm with um, some experience and um, and knowledge excellent okay and so I suppose just one quick question going back to the the first time it didn't work what was the how did you know because sometimes as entrepreneurs we can really keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and hoping that's going to work out but there has to come a point where you go actually this does not make any sense and I do need to change do you yep. remember what that point was what what um was the the, the nail in the coffin or whatever you want to call it that sort of made you go okay this is not working I need to change yeah, I think, you know, uh, Dan Phillips, who was in the business for eight years, um, he was really our, you know, kind of third partner. He always had a, had an expression saying, you know, we are only doing this for one of three reasons. We're doing it for um, fun, fame, or fortune. So, so, you know, if we're not, if we're not achieving, you know, one of those three things, there's no point doing this. Right. And I think, you know, really it was a realization we, we'd, we'd made that move. We were trying to reposition the business to make us, I guess, a more famous or be a credible, a credible player. Mm -hmm. We weren't doing work that we liked. It wasn't any fun and we weren't making any money in fact we were losing money doing this yep, so awesome. you know it didn't tick any of those criteria and really the big thing was it wasn't any fun you know we 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 had an agency that was kind of uh, formed on a really great culture and spirit we were excited to come to work but it had gotten to the point where we were beaten down and it wasn't fun so it was kind of at that point where we realized this isn't this isn't exciting, this isn't fun, this isn't working. And it was that was we need to make a change. Perfect. Okay. And obviously that change um, you've managed to execute successfully now. Um, yeah, and it look it it it's it's a never ending journey. It it, ta it takes time. You know, um, we brought in a woman Emma Dalton from YNR, and she really started to set in place um, a kind of move to a, a, a new 
integrated creative agency that we are now. We subsequently brought in um, uh, Scott Maddox, who is as a creative director, and then Anne Boothroyd. Anne's amazing. So, you know, we've promoted her to be our executive creative director. Um, so she's really elevated our creative capabilities. Um, and then literally um, uh, end of last year, we brought in Andrea Long um, to head up our media team um, and Ryan Sproul to head up our strategy team. So now we've kind of got four really strong leaders. So, you know, this, this real last shift has really been in play for probably three to four years, mm -hmm. but it's taken till the middle of last year for us to kind of have all the building blocks in place to be really confident about um, our offering today. Sure. So, you know, the the, these things take a while. <laughs> and so now that you have got those four strong leaders and, you know, you've got the right people in the right seats, what, what difference has that made for you, again, as the founder of the business? And Well, it's, you know, I, I think, you know, you always want to bring in people that are smart and smarter than you into the business. And, you know, my whole team have got way more advertising experience than I have. I mean, I've, I never worked in an advertising agency. I was a client side guy who started a digital agency. Yep. So my team are strong. You know, they have, they know what they're doing um, and they can, they can basically run the agency without me. So I don't need to be in the agency day to day. My, my, the kind of key roles for me are around, you know, working with the team to set the direction and our plan on an annual basis, yep. working with our, our key clients from a relation, just a relationship point of view. You know, Emma looks after all the day-to-day. -day. I don't get involved in the day-to-day -day work. I'm interested in seeing the day-to-day -day work, um, but I don't, I'm, I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day work. And then also new business, you know, talking to new business owners, understanding their, their challenges, their struggles. I mean, what I like, you know, our purpose as an agency is to transform and grow um, the clients that we work with. And I, I, I get excited by, you know, talking to business owners and just understanding what their struggles are, their challenges are, and understanding where their opportunities are that we can help them um, kind of transform and grow. Yeah. We talk about in EOS, you know, if you can delegate and elevate, so have the right people around you in the right seats, you can finally delegate that stuff so that you can elevate to the things that you really love doing with the people you love doing. Would yeah. you say that that's where you're at now? Well, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, dear brother. I think there's still there's still a journey to go on. Yeah. Um, so Emma's recently been um, elevated to be general manager. She looks after the client service team. So yeah. she still looks after the client service team, but she does have day-to-day -day responsibility for ru the running of the agency. So um, she's trying to step up and I'm trying to step back to allow her to kind of elevate and, and grow. And that's a transition. Um, and we're probably... Yeah, that only, that happened less than twelve months ago. At the end of last year, the beginning of this year. Gosh, I can't even remember when the actual date. I think it was the beginning of this year. Yeah. So you know that is a journey, and I I think um, I'm I'm probably half we're halfway through that journey. Still still more still more work to do. To come. Fair enough. And so, if people who are listening in who are kind of going through this growth themselves, what would be the sort of three top tips that you might give them to help them on their journey? Is there any sort of you know things you've come across that you go, wow, that really changed the way that I built the business or my personal yeah. life, or it might be? Yeah, I look, I think it's it might be a bit trite, but you know, I think I think as business owners, we have to be brave. Um, you know, we have to set some big goals and not be afraid to set some big goals. I think New Zealand business owners often can get, um, just get caught up in the day-to-day -day and, and get caught in the day-to-day -day running of their businesses. And it's finding that time to step back, think bigger um, and set some, some, some brave lofty goals and then, and, and then articulate those, share them with the team, get everyone to buy into them um, so they become real. They're not real if they're just living inside your head. Um, you know, you, they have to, be, have to be shared. So I think being brave and, and thinking big would be my first one. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I kind of relate that to our current situation with our um, COVID plan at the moment. It's like, I think that if people can understand what the plan is, even if they don't necessarily completely get it or completely agree with it, if it's written down, if it's articulated, if it's communicated, people can get behind it. Absolutely. And then they understand when it changes because they, uh, you know, they, they're told why it's changed. But if you haven't yep. actually got it out of your head, it's no. useless. Yeah, Absolutely. nobody can nobody can read our minds yet. <laughs> okay, so brief, be brave and think big. Love it. Yeah, um, I think I think um, you know accepting that we all make mistakes. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, you know, um, no one gets it perfect. Um, the road, the road to success isn't a straight line. Um, you know, we've had lots of up and downs as, 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 as an agency, you know, we got up to, you know, 40, 50 people at one point, we're at 35 now, um, but we've got 35 stronger, more senior people in the business than we did before. So you, there are ups and downs along the way. Um, and, you know, I think as long as you can accept that, you know, you're not perfect as, as, the, as an owner and the leader, um, listen to feedback from others and learn from failures um, and and put plans in place, um, and you know that, that that adjust and kind of can adapt. Um, you know that's a good thing. And how do you sort of stop yourself from beating yourself up? Because you know we, we do make mistakes and things do go wrong. How how have you personally sort of stopped yourself from, you know, taking that and taking it all on board as being a failure yourself? Yeah, I think I, it's really interesting. I I think you know I kind of come across this almost two types of people. Um, I'm, I, I always look forward, I never look back. But you know, some people do get caught up in the looking back and getting hung up about why we didn't do this or why we didn't do that. You know, when you're in that moment and that point of time, the only thing you can do is think about where you want to go and the, and the next steps are gonna, that are going to get, get you there. It makes no difference to anyone dwelling on um, uh, dwelling on or beating yourself up about a decision that got you where you are today as long as you can learn from that lesson and then make the right next steps and adjust then it's about moving forward so you know I, I always I, I'm always looking forward yeah, I must admit, I agree. I, I mean, I've had some pretty massive mistakes in my life, if I'm honest, but you have to yep. just kind of go, well, that was what it was. What did I learn from it? How do I make sure I don't do it again? Okay, yeah. last, last third and final tip. Look, I think it's um, make sure you surround yourself with great people. Um, and I, the, the only little twist on that I'd, I'd put in is, you know, when you are interviewing, make sure you, you have a lens um, that, so that you don't get caught up into the, in the um, hiring people just like me trap. Um, you know, I think we all have a, um, a, a tendency to hire people like us. I know in the early days, we had a lot of um, white, um, not middle-aged, but, you know, white lads around the office because I could see myself in them and I go, yeah, great, come on board. But, you know, we, we hired a, a woman, Courtney, who looked after our sort of HR stuff for a while and, and she really just held it up to my face and said, hey, um, it's not a lot of diversity going on here so I think you know we um, it's very easy to kind of you know uh, to get hung up in and 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 kind of higher in your own image so I think you know making sure that you uh, uh, are making a short list that you're including others whether it's um, uh, sex or uh, ethnicity you know we always make a make a, um, a concerted effort now on our short list that we have to have diversity in our short list and Sometimes we've been proactively hiring to, to re, recalibrate the diversity in the office. And I think that's really important. So hiring great people and hiring a mix of people. Sure. And I suppose um, I was talking to Sam Stubbs the other day and he was saying that they actually get all of their staff involved in kind of interviewing people and, and to get that diversity of interviewing as well as just yep, diversity yep. of people. What's the process that you go through with your people and how do you make sure? Because, you know, you've got values and you can say to people, hey, um, are you brave? And they go, oh, yes, absolutely. But how do you kind of sanity check that to make sure they're not just... Um, saying it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's hard. I think you've got to have, you know, obviously two to three interviews you know with anyone and interviewed as you say by different people um, for for certain roles we actually ask people to do a bit of a project um, and do a bit of work because we want to actually see capability um, because it's one thing to have skills on your cv but it's another thing to be able to demonstrate so we often give people an exercise or something to do and we often um, do a bit of a group interview at a final stage to bring um, uh, to, to allow the, uh, allow the person to kind of meet some of the wider team, because I think it's a, an interview is a two way um, two way thing. You know, um, I think people need to buy into us, and they need, you know, we can tell them how how exciting the office is and how 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 great the culture is. But if they hear that from other people and give other people the opportunity to have a bit of a chat to them and raise any flags, and that is an opportunity for both for both sides to raise a flag and to um, to either either proceed or not on a on a hiring basis. So I think it's 
having two or three interviews first until you're certain, um, having someone do some work, so to show you how they work, and then having a more of a social interview um, to kind of, that will often pick up some of those cultural um, traits and cultural aspects then. Love it. Right. So what's next? What's next for the agency? Well, look, I think, you know, we just want to get through this lockdown and get to Christmas. Um, you know, I, I think for us, you know, we've got a really good fat foundation in place now. Uh, we've got a really strong team. We're really focused on helping our clients find the sweet spot, you know, kind of between creative human-led ideas and, and leveraged digital smart. So kind of bringing that, that, that newness um, of that kind of creative agency and that heritage of the digital agency, bringing that to life. Um, we, we really want to work with, you know, those mid-market New Zealand brands that are really ambitious and want to grow. I mean, that what's, that's what gets me out of bed every day is I want to help um, New Zealand brands that are kind of either taking on the big multinationals or exporting or just growing. Um, because, you know, that's what I want for, for, for the business and for my kids is a more dynamic, more exciting, you know, New Zealand yeah. um, commercial environment. I completely agree. Well, that's fantastic. So if anybody's listening and would like to chat to you, how would they get hold of you, Duncan? Well, they can just Google Young Shand and they'll find yeah. youngshand.com. Um, uh, they'll find my phone numbers phone number on the site um, or they can find me on LinkedIn, just Duncan Shand on LinkedIn. So. Awesome. Hey, look, it's been really good to catch up with you. It's been a long while, so I'm looking forward to perhaps catching up once we're out of this lockdown again. Yeah. Um, but thank you for sharing all that with us. It's been really interesting. It's really cool to see that, you know, the, the growth of the agents in the ebbs and flows, but that you've now got an amazing team on board. I actually know a couple of those people quite personally myself. So, yeah, yeah. I know that you've got good people. Um, look forward to seeing where it comes to next. And thank right. you for your time. Cool. Thanks, Deborah. It's been great to chat. Yeah, thanks very much, Duncan. Okay, bye.